Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at PowerShell. PowerShell is one of the most important things that we can actually learn for our career within IT and for cloud and anything that we do with servers that we want to actually automate and script. We need a really good fundamental understanding of this content to be able to interact through things like APIs and through things like Cloud Shell environments for if we want to make sure that we can produce repeatable tasks in code. It's the basis of infrastructure as code in the Windows land and even now moving into the Linux and the Mac OS land with PowerShell 7. In this video, we're going to take a look at PowerShell version 7, the open source of version of PowerShell and how to install it. We'll also look at the differences between why we actually have two PowerShells in Windows now, PowerShell 7 and PowerShell version 5.1 that is still used for our on-site services and our on-site servers. So I hope you enjoy this content and you'll join me for this introduction into PowerShell. So, the first thing I want to talk about with PowerShell here is the different versionings because these can be quite confusing, um, especially for somebody who hasn't seen PowerShell before. PowerShell 1 all the way through to PowerShell 5.1 over here, right? These versions, PowerShell 1 and 2, these were kind of like the XP eras. Uh, PowerShell 3 into 4, we're talking about kind of the Vista eras and moving up to the Windows 7 eras. And then here in PowerShell version 5.1, we're in the Windows 7 era. Now, there's a very big significant difference between the jump between PowerShell 5.1 and PowerShell 6.0. Microsoft decided to rename this into PowerShell Core, and then subsequently in PowerShell 7, dropped the name of Core. But the big difference here is not really what operating system it relates to, but the fact that this here is built differently. So this, these first PowerShell elements over here were based on .NET or the .NET framework. More specifically, it was based on the closed source versioning of .NET framework. Whereas over here, this is actually based on what they called .NET Core. Okay. This is when Microsoft decided to rewrite the .NET framework to actually make this open source. So that's nice. But what that does mean is there can be and there is a lot of incompatibilities between these older versions and these newer versions. What you'll find is that PowerShell version 5.1 is currently still pre-installed and, and pre-integrated into Windows Server at the moment. And a lot of the Windows Server commandlets that you may want to use, things to deal with Active Directory, things to deal with DNS, and things to deal with other things inside um, a Windows Server like IIS, may actually be referencing PowerShell version 5.1. PowerShell version 7 and above is where we're going into now, but you actually have to install this separately to your existing PowerShell 5.1. So what you end up with is you actually end up with two PowerShells um, on your machine at the same time. If you're even if you're used to things like Python, think about it like Python 2 versus Python 3, in the fact that there is some crossover between those two languages, but there is fundamental differences in running Python 2 code and running Python 3 code. The things we are going to discuss here to get started with PowerShell are actually going to be relevant for PowerShell version 5.1 and for PowerShell version 7. So let's get into actually installing some things to work with with PowerShell. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to go and grab Visual Studio Code. Now, we can use other things other than Visual Studio Code to write PowerShell. If I'm absolutely mad, I could even choose to write PowerShell code inside Notepad. But today, um, I don't feel that mad, so I'm going to go and download Visual Studio Code to open and run. Now, Windows does come, and this has been for a long time, uh, does come with PowerShell ISE, the integrated scripting environment. If you're just getting started with PowerShell, this will work perfectly fine for you. You can even switch it to this mode over here, and you can start typing and running PowerShell code you will very quickly run out of talent with that and you will need to get going with um, with Visual Studio Code at some point. So I'm just going to next, next, next install this. This is actually a brand new Windows 11 virtual machine that I'm running at the moment. Uh, I've actually spun this up in Azure. So if I launch Visual Studio Code now, Visual Studio Code does not actually understand any PowerShell at the moment. So 
for example, if I attempt to actually go and write some PowerShell code inside here, um, it won't be able to do IntelliSense, it won't be able to color things, it won't be able to give me hints about how my code is actually running. One of the big things about VS Code is it runs on an extension-based system. It's pretty blank to start with, but we need to tell it how all of this stuff works. So if I want to go and look for PowerShell inside here, I can go and install it's quite a lot of extensions to PowerShell actually, but I want to install the official PowerShell module here from Microsoft. What I'm also going to do, just to prove a point, is I'm going to pop up here and we're going to launch PowerShell as an app within Windows itself. Now we could run it here if we wanted to. We could also run this if we're on Windows 11 in the new Windows terminal. Because PowerShell, the language, and an actual in an actual shell that we can interact with are two slightly different things. We don't necessarily need to actually have a PowerShell shell over here and a PowerShell shell over here. So we can look at the Windows terminal and what I want to do is I want to run this very special command $PS version table. This is going to show me the current version of PowerShell I'm running on this computer and you can see it's version 5.1 because it's a fresh installation. If I come down here into my VS Code, you'll notice there's a few elements to this. There is one section over here where I can open a folder, and here is a terminal for me to run some commands in. Now, again, if I run that $PS version, ta version table over here, I've still got version 5.1. What about if I want the latest version, if I want PowerShell version 7? I've actually got to go and install it. So if I go onto the internet and go and search for PowerShell, what you will find is you'll find, whoops, let's correct that, this option here for installing PowerShell on Windows. Okay, so if I want to install PowerShell, I'm going to go and grab the MSI package here for PowerShell version 7.3.2, and we're going to open that and extract it and run it. I'm going to enable PowerShell remoting because we're going to get through to that later on. Um, and we're going to add run with PowerShell 7 to some context menus for PowerShell files. That's fine. We'll just enable updating for this as well. And we'll hit install. Quick next, next, next install. So now that setup is completed, if I launch my terminal again, if I go and relaunch that terminal, what I should find here is an extra option. I've got Windows PowerShell and I've got PowerShell. Notice the slight different colors in the icon as well. And you'll notice this is PowerShell version 7.3.2. If I do $PS version table, whoops, let's type that correctly. If I do $PS version table and hit enter, you'll notice I'm running PowerShell version 7.3.2. You'll also notice if I do commands like this, get dash command, and another get dash command over here. There's actually slightly different amounts of default commands. Now, if I do get dash command measure dash object, you'll see I've actually got a result of 1655 commands if I'm running PowerShell version 7. If I run the same thing over here, get dash command pipe that to get uh, measure dash object. you'll see I've got 1,698. Slightly different. This has evolved quite a lot. When PowerShell uh, Core first came out in version 6, there was probably about only 30% of the commands have been passed over. And Microsoft have been slowly unpicking .NET ever since. So what we can do now is in VS Code, I want to go and create a project folder. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to go to open a folder and we'll go into documents and we'll create a folder in our documents called PowerShell code. We'll select that folder and on the left hand side we have an explorer for that folder and on the right hand side here we have our tab and we also have the ability to click terminal and run a terminal. So three sections here within VS Code. Let's just create a new file here, and let's go and call this test.ps1. 
So all our PowerShell files are going to have .ps1 appended to them. And let's just go and run something very, very simple. Let's just do a write. In fact, let's make that a little bit bigger first. So let's increase the size of this for us. And let's do write-host and let's do hello world. And if I go and run that code now, click start debugging here. I could also run this with F5. It will pass that code down to this shell underneath and it will give me the output of hello world. I could also run that same PowerShell file in another way. I could open up that file. So if I go to documents, go to PowerShell code, you'll notice my PowerShell file is available. If I double click on it, nothing happens. It's a security feature. It actually opens the PS4, PS1 file without running it. If I want to run this script, I need to right click and run it with PowerShell. And if I run that, it runs it in the shell and immediately closes. The reason is that that shell itself has completed the code. It's written to the window, hello world, and has shut itself down. So if I want to take that code now, I'm actually going to move this into one of my shells here. Oops. Okay, it's not going to let it move it. So if I want to run that code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over into one of my shells. I'm going to go into CD documents. And I'm going to go into PowerShell code. And I'm going to run that test.ps1 from here. And you can see the output is hello world. So if you're attempting to run that PowerShell code directly here, just notice it flashes up and immediately expires. I could solve this problem by putting some extra code in there. I can just put a pause to save that. And if I save it and rerun it, run that with PowerShell, you'll notice the pause has put a press enter here to continue at the end. Very, very useful. So that concludes getting started with PowerShell. We've set up PowerShell version 7. We've installed VS Code. We've added the extension to VS Code. And we're going to continue on and continue to work within VS Code to show off all of the lovely things that PowerShell can do within this series. And you know the routine. Hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.